Have you ever felt so out of sync that you didn't know who you were anymore? Or perhaps experienced so many letdowns and disappointments that you've lost trust in people and all their promises to you? I'm Brother Jeff DeGia, a minister of the gospel here in the Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ. And today, we're here to help you. When you ask people what they want most in life, you're probably thinking, isn't it money? Isn't it wealth? But, you know, I think we'd all agree that what our soul really wants or yearning is peace. Peace in our life, peace of mind. Today, you'll meet people who were in your same exact shoes, but we'll learn why they didn't give up. So stay with us. Find out what they did, how, how they did it to get the one thing that people want most in life today, truly peace in their lives. But before we introduce you to them, allow me to share you these Bible verses with you to give you hope and to let you know that, you know, no matter how deep your hurt is, you're not alone. Let's read here in the book of John, chapter 16, 20, and also verse 22. I can guarantee this truth. You will cry because you are sad, but the world will be happy. You will feel pain but your pain will turn to happiness. Now you're in a painful situation, but I will see you again. Then you will be happy, and no one will take that happiness away from you. And I would like to share another verse with you. Here in the book of Psalm 42, 3, 5, 4, and 8. Day and night my tears are my only food, as everyone keeps asking, where is your God? Why am I discouraged? Why am I restless? I trust you, and I will praise you again because you helped me. Sorrow floods my heart when I remember leading the worshipers to your house. I can still hear them shout their joyful praises every day. You are kind, and at night you give me a song as my prayer to you, the living Lord God. Perhaps there are times where we experience ourselves hardships or disappointments. Well, the Bible clearly showed that so did the early servants of our Lord God. So we shouldn't be surprised. Now we'll introduce you to Marisol, who experienced the best joy and the worst heartbreak all at once. This is her story. I actually met someone when I was 28 years old and I had a relationship with him, and um, I got pregnant. When I told the father of my child, um, he decided to leave me and told me that he couldn't be there. I cried too much, and within two weeks, I had a miscarriage. And when that happened, it broke my heart. That was my breaking point. I was crying and as, as I was crying I said God please you you can help me I need to know exactly what's going on I need some heal I need my heart to be healed I cannot continue like this one day I was driving from Fairfax to my house I actually went to and stopped by in front of Iglesia de Cristo the chapel in San Pablo. From there, I was like, okay, so this is a sign. <laughs> I Google Church of Christ, because that's what they had in front. When I found uh, INC Media, I started searching around, and I found uh, this video called The Message, turned into the Bible in certain times. It grabbed my attention because I was going through kind of a similar, a similar thing. I went all the way down to the website and it says ask a question and that's where I asked the question. That's when Arlene was the one that contacted me. After having a little conversation with them, she asked me if I wanted to meet with a minister so he could answer my questions or read from the Bible. When Brother Richie reached out to me, 
and Darlene was there as well. They asked me questions and I answered and I also asked questions. Uh, Brother Richie asked me if I wanted to attend one of the Bible lessons um, online due to the pandemic. They were doing it online. So I attended the first one that night. And after that, I took all the Bible lessons. When they reach out to me and they start reading from the Bible, that's, 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 that's what grabbed my attention. When I was in the Catholic Church, they won't actually read um, from the Bible. They have these new magazines. I don't know exactly what they use, and they go by them. They don't actually tell you, oh, this is where you, it says uh, you have to pray for this person or that person or this image. Or they, it doesn't really say anything like that. And when I saw that Brother Richie was reading from the Bible, it was obviously uh, one moment that made me realize, okay, let me continue. First time I went to a chapel, it was the best feeling ever because it was the first time that I walked into a church without feeling judged, without feeling uh, guilt. As soon as you walk in, it's a good feeling. I started praying and it made me feel good. I wanted to heal, but I didn't want to stop doing what I was doing. I thought it was okay for me to keep doing what I was doing, that, well, God is going to forgive me, so it's okay, I'll just do it and He'll forgive me. But then I've learned that He wants, he wants more from us than just saying sorry or saying thank you. He wants more from us. I wish I would have found you all. I wish I would have searched for it and tried it before. And probably that way I wouldn't have gone through what I went through. Once Marisol met a minister of the gospel in the Church of Christ, she not only shared with him her struggles and heartache, but he was able to show her how God's words can lighten the heavy load in her heart. After going through Bible studies in the Church of Christ and being baptized, Marisol then became a new person. What's your favorite answer to prayer? The heal of my heart. I have forgiven a lot of people because of that. I have prayed to forgive who has hurt me, so I have forgiven. Now I see that we need God, we need Him in our lives, in our families, in the marriages, in our friendships in order for us to have uh, the happiness. Because without Him, it, there's no happiness. Happiness is what Felix kept chasing. A young man in college, trying to figure out his life, he thought hanging out with his friends would make him happy. He thought drugs would help calm his mind. Instead, he spiraled and was desperate for help. I don't know, I just could, I couldn't sleep. I would, like, I would start crying and I would just look up, like, why, why can't I sleep? Uh, and then in um, 2020, I would always drive with no destination. I drove to um, Big Sur um, around December. Uh, you know, I, I like, I like um, seeing the view you know, of the bridge, right? I went there twice in a row. And then on that third night, that's when I had the... This, this, <laughs> That's when I had the suicide thoughts of jumping off the bridge and then... And then I think it was um, the morning after New Year's. I made that commitment where I'm going to stop doing all these drugs and turn to God. Imagine one simple invitation from an old friend to experience the Iglesia Cristo Church of Christ helped turn his life around. My first impression of the Church of Christ, um, I... I thought it was amazing, to be honest, because I think my, my first Bible study, I asked the minister, what is salvation? And then the minister told me that it should be biblical, and then told me that the person that invited you um, is trying to save you from the lake of fire. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know what salvation was. And then after that, I, I, 
I thanked her, you know. My belief back then was like everybody was going to go to heaven. About the, the doctrine about who, who God really is. It was a, a worship service. The difference between God and Jesus Christ. It says um, how God is um, above all, how Jesus Christ was set, sent by God, but not being God on earth. How can a human be God? But then when I heard the, the doctrine in, in the Church of Christ that God is the Father and, the, and Jesus Christ is the Son and the Holy Spirit is different. So it can't be three in one when there's one above all. After when I signed up as a Bible student, it actually took me four months to actually sign up as a Bible student. And then, you know, I went through my 28 lessons, you know, my faith grew. Every single prayer, every single morning, I would ask, um, Father, increase my faith. My faith has been growing so much. Uh, I remember that on that night, January 1st, I was on my knees um, next to my bed and just calling on to God that night. I'm just reaching out to Him like, I'm sorry, Father, for never reaching out to you in my life and that I need you in my life. Like first, before I didn't know what to do in my life, you know, having changing all my careers. I'm studying to be a barber. My future goal is to take some business classes and having my own shop in the future. Your, your plans might not go the way you want it, but God will make your plans for you. Because <laughs> yeah, like before, without having him in my life, um, like I said, I was a very lost man. But now that I have him in my life, he, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. You can... He's the best, you know. <laughs> now, now that I have in my life, I'm, I know where I'm going and I'm not lost no more. So I'm, I just want to be more stronger and more happier. God is amazing. God is my father. God is someone you can tell anything about. You can pray to him. You can tell him any situation. God is the Almighty God, God is love, God is the best to have in your life. If I, didn't, if I never received an invitation from the person who invited me, I feel like my, my life would have been the same. Smoking every day, going out with friends, sleeping in my room, that's how my life was back then. But now that I have the Church of Christ, I know where I'm going and I'm, not, I'm never alone. Now, Felix's journey began with discovering truth in the Church of Christ through Bible studies and was eventually baptized. While Felix pursued the truth, Todd, on the other hand, took his time. In fact, he didn't even think he needed God. My main questions regarding God growing up was, what was our purpose in life? Why is life unfair? Why is it some instances you hear of God is... You know, he's going to bring fire and brimstone and punish you. But it seems contradictory when you hear, oh, he's so forgiving and he's such a kind and gracious God. So I was kind of mixed in that aspect. And then the other thing was, I was it felt like I was made guilty if I had too many questions. I was supposed to just accept it and think strong in mystery and just follow. And that never really sat right with me. Todd was a very inquisitive and curious young man when he was first introduced to the Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ. Having been exposed to other churches where his questions went unanswered, he never took any explanation for face value. He researched and contemplated what he learned in the Church of Christ Bible studies and asked a lot of questions. It took me about six to eight months to finally become committed after my last Bible study lessons. It was a life-changing commitment. I was living my life, I guess, comfortably, and certain things or temptations that I enjoyed, and I didn't necessarily want to sacrifice those things to follow a religion. The other reason it took me a while was, part of me couldn't believe it was real. It was, okay, I have all these questions, I did my own research, and now I'm gonna trip you up in the Bible studies, and none of that happened. It actually, just, all my questions got answered from the Bible. As I started to accomplish certain things or got a taste for, I guess, the lifestyle I thought I desired, I realized it wasn't as meaningful before I had it. 
sometimes we look at religion as a restrictive, conforming way to live our lives. Whereas most of us want to be free and feel like we have control and power over what makes us happy. So what I would say to people who don't need a church, as long as they believe in God, I would say dig deeper, ask questions, pray to God, ask Him for that guidance, ask Him for that acknowledgement and confirmation to find His truth. The reason I would encourage people to give the Church of Christ a chance and listen is your salvation depends on it. It doesn't cost you anything. If you give something a chance, either you gain from it or your life remains in change. So if there's a gain to be had, why wouldn't you pursue it? My biggest fear is missing out on God's promise. In this journey, there's a lot of ups and downs, but I take comfort in knowing that my faith is strong and that God always fulfills on His promises. I feel humbled in that sense, because I know I don't deserve it. And looking at my life ahead, having God's promise and having God's guidance it feels almost like a superpower, almost like I'm cheating, like I have a cheat code. But I'm humbled to have it, and I'm grateful that I do. So that makes me very optimistic of the future, trials, and triumph. What the Church of Christ offered that was missing in my life was a true sense of truth. Truth. That's something that so many people are seeking. So ask yourself, why are we still tuned into this program? Isn't it because we're hoping to be a better version of ourselves? And in order for that to happen, we were finding ourselves trying different things out. So in search for the genuine truth and peace, do yourself a favor and include the Church of Christ. Let's be honest. We're constantly examining and learning between which two things would be best for us. We do that daily. Example, your favorite food, your... your your, your interest in life. You wouldn't have known which would be best unless you did your due diligence and tried them out, right? But I think, but think about this. Think about, these are just worldly matters. These are just worldly things. How much more your spiritual matters? How much more your salvation? Now for those who, because of the heartaches and anxieties in life, are burdened beyond measure, may you continue to place your hope and trust in our Lord God. You might ask, how? May these remaining verses truly bring comfort and, and inspiration to each one of us that are watching. Here in 1 Peter chapter 5, and the verses are 7 and also 10. Tell God about all the things that make you sad or afraid or angry. Give your thoughts about those things to Him and let them remain with Him. Do this because you matter to Him. You will have trouble and pain for a short time, but after that, God, who is so completely kind, will make everything right. God has caused you to be united to Christ so that you will live with Him always. You will live with Him in the beautiful place where He lives, and God will make you completely as you should be. He will make you strong so that nothing can ever stop you believing Him. We hope that watching this video is just the start of the steps you're taking to find peace in your life. We hope that this video not only brought you closer to finding the peace in your life, but the certainty of eternal peace through eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, as biblically taught, those only who are united to Christ will live with Him always in the beautiful place where He lives. Who though are united to Christ? Ephesians 3, 6 teaches that the members of the one body, being Christ's church taught in Colossians 1:18, have a share in the promised salvation and eternal life. Hence, we highly encourage you who are watching today to give this church 
the Church of Christ a chance. Because as stated in Ephesians 5, 31, 32, one cannot be truly united to Christ unless he or she becomes united or be part of the Church of Christ. We'd love to meet you. Join us in a worship service in a local congregation nearest you. Meet a minister so we can pray for you and help guide you through a series of Bible studies that will not only bring you closer to God, but help you in attaining peace and life eternal. I'm Brother Jeff DeGia. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you soon. God bless. If you've ever done a Google search on the Iglesia de Cristo or the Church of Christ, you'll find millions of results. If you're trying to figure out what this church is all about, it can be a bit overwhelming. So before you click out of the search engine or click on Wikipedia, one of the largest user-generated databases in the world, we've summed up the 10 things you should know about the Church of Christ in this one short video. Number one, we are not part of a denomination. There are a lot of churches that go by the name Church of Christ, but we're different. First, the Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ is not part of the Churches of Christ associated with the American Restoration Movement. And secondly, the Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ has biblical prophecy as evidence of their authenticity. Number two, we believe that Jesus Christ is a man and not God. The Bible speaks of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit but it never ever refers to all of them as gods, nor as three persons or a trinity in one God. Instead, it points to the Father alone as the true God. This might be completely different from what you grew up believing. That's why we invite you to set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a minister of the Church of Christ to understand what the Bible says about God, Jesus, and what you should believe so as to be saved. Number three. We follow the Bible and only the Bible. In the Iglesia de Cristo Church of Christ, we use a question and answer format, and all the answers are from the Bible. It's the same format we follow in worship services, Bible studies, and even the one-on-one -on -one conversations you'll want to have with one of the Church of Christ's ministers. Number four, we are not a cult. We're sure you'll want to dig into this more, so let's set up some time to talk. Number five, we don't practice infant baptism. The Bible teaches that to qualify for baptism, one should be taught the words of God, believe in them, repent, and renew his or her life. Since an infant cannot do these things, infant baptism is not practiced in the Church of Christ. And with that, we've got five more left. Number six, we don't celebrate Christmas, Easter, Halloween, Valentine's Day, or any holiday based on pagan beliefs. Trace the history of any of these holidays and you'll quickly discover how pagan practices crept in and influenced each one. The Bible prohibits adding to or subtracting from what is written, including believing in holidays rooted in pagan beliefs, so we don't celebrate them. Number seven, we are not a Filipino church. Yes, there are many Filipinos, but the Church of Christ comprises members from over 147 ethnicities. Number eight, we believe the reestablishment of the church is Bible-based and supported by biblical prophecy. What does the Bible say about reestablishing the first century Church of Christ founded by the Lord Jesus Christ? And how did it become the church you're learning about right now? We've got a series of lessons breaking it down with Bible verses for you to follow along and ask questions. Number nine, we don't practice tithing. We frequently get this question from those emailing our website, so it's good we're covering it in this list. According to 2 Corinthians 9, 7 in the New King James Version of the Bible, God is very specific on who should give and how it should be given. As the Bible says, as he purposes in his heart. So not 10% anymore as it was during the Old Testament times. Now it's in a person's heart. Number 10. We believe that to be saved, you need to enter Christ and be part of His body or church. 
The Bible explicitly teaches that a person should enter by Christ by becoming a member of his body or church, because it is his church that Christ will save. Because of this, we're not shy in saying that you need to be a part or a member of the true church of Christ, because that's what the Bible teaches. We know this might feel like a lot of information all at once, and there's still so much we want to share with you, especially how God's words can transform your life. So what are you waiting for? Set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a minister of the Church of Christ. You'll get to ask your questions, and if you're interested in learning more, we'll tell you more about the next step.